Tedakota Tefano o Aotearoa Unitarian. Tedakota na manahiri no mai harmai kitene hui topa ate atua tenakoto tena tato katoa. Thank you. Gather we now into this space, this time when the wheel turns and the veil shatters. Gather we now to remember, to grieve, to prophesy, to complete our harvest before the long dark comes. Gather we now to tell the old stories and sing the old songs to be as we have always been, the voice of our people eternal. Gather we now to celebrate that which was, that which is, and that which will be. Gather we now, as we have always done, united by story and bound by love. My opening words are by Cervantes. He wrote this in Don Quixote. Blessing on him who invented sleep, the mantle that covers all human thoughts the food that satisfies hunger, the drink that slakes thirst, the fire that warms the cold, the cold that moderates heat, and lastly, the balance and weight that equalizes the shepherd and the king, the simpleton and the sage. Our opening song is not found in our hymnal, but if you're a Joni Mitchell fan, you might enjoy it. And now if you have a chalice or a candle to light, this is the time. Even as the days grow shorter, and our homes shrink smaller, and our wicks burn lower, and our will to endure flickers. We light this chalice to kindle a flame of warmth as a reminder of the connection that draws us into a community that opens us up in gratitude for the breath in our lungs and the love in our hearts for the gift of this day alive. My reading for this morning is entitled Pause, that's P-A-U-S-E, not Kittens by Lori Gorgas Laban. Pause, balanced in the center between the longest and shortest days. Equinox, the wheel of the year turns and turns again. The air cools, days shorten, the sun seems to weaken, barely clearing the horizon after rising before beginning its descent. This is our opportunity now to pause, balanced, breathing in, breathing out, knowing this present moment. This present moment is all we're guaranteed, like the sun moving toward the shortest day. Each moment arises and is gone before we know it. This is the time to pause and consider as we enter the season of contemplation, of increasing darkness, 
of lying fallow, of dormancy. This is the season of letting go, of lightening burdens, of preparing for a long period of being still, going deep, pause and consider. Binaries, dark and light, hot and cold, chaos and order, Neither extreme is inherently good or bad. It's all a matter of balance, of honoring the spectrum for which binaries mark the endpoints. Today, we mark the midpoint between summer and winter solstice, a time to seek balance and be free. And now we'll listen to something by a Unitarian composer called So We Go. I've entitled this musing Teetering Without Tottering. When I was a child, I liked to play on the teeter-totter at the playground. Apparently, you call it a seesaw here. What I found challenging was finding the balance point with my partner on the other end. I was not a philosophy prodigy at the age of seven, so I had not the words to describe what I intuitively knew. Balance is a positive outcome in a precarious world. I did not know it was not easily achieved. No, I, let me say that again. I did know it was not easily achieved. As likely as not, one end would crash down with in my case, prostate jarring intensity, while the other end would fly up threatening to launch the occupant into the stratosphere. Giggling with glee at our failure, we would eagerly try again to teeter without tottering. As we get older, we learn that life is mostly tottering. On the playground, about the only time we teetered in balance was that flash in the pan moment as we went from one extreme to the other. You might wonder what inspired this musing. Last Wednesday was the autumn equinox in the Southern Hemisphere and the spring equinox in the Northern. It is a day when both hemispheres have approximately equal amounts of daylight and night depending on their latitude. Since there are equinoxes twice a year and each is about 12 hours long, 24 hours of the year's 8,760 hours are in balance. That pretty much sums up my life as well, but I keep trying. For those too old to teeter-totter, I have learned rock balancing is a thing. On walks in the bush or along a stream, I have occasionally come across a stack of rocks. I've always wondered what they were about. Apparently, some find building them a meditative act, an exercise in the power of visualizing a positive outcome in a precarious world. The works requires strength, dexterity, and patience. But the real challenge is simply mustering and maintaining the belief that it is possible. 
they might look a little like this. Or this. Or my favorite, this. They have clearly mastered teetering. Just seeing these improbable positive outcomes in a precarious world is today's musing. Preach the gospel always, so said Francis of Assisi, and if necessary, use words. In Buddhism, the lotus flower, which is born in mud at the bottom of the pond, rises and blooms at the surface, symbolizing enlightenment. In the Hebrew scriptures, the rainbow represents God's covenant with humankind. Orthodox Christian devotion contemplates the holy mystery of the cross. Unimpressed by the preaching from the pulpit, Waldo Emerson in his pew in Concord was transfixed by what he saw through the clear glass windows of that sanctuary, such as the changing colors of the leaves. He realized that unmediated by words and books and institutions, one can have an original experience of the divine which is why our Transylvanian friends say they build the walls of their sanctuaries high so your mind won't drift from the palaver of the preacher. Experiences of the natural give us glimpses of the miraculous. And so, yes, just by seeing this rocks, you've had your sermon for today. The rest is commentary. Today's commentary is obviously on spiritual teeter-tottering, an occupation to find the balance. Thanks to the internet and Kindle, I searched for every reference to balance I could find. One book entitled Balance in Search of the Lost Sense claims that in addition to our five senses, we possess a sixth innate sense of balance, operating automatically below the level of consciousness. It orchestrates our nerve impulses and allows us to dance with gravity. That book tells the story about Carl Walenda, of the Flying Walendas. Carl probably had the most perfectly honed sense of balance of any human being in the 20th century. At the age of 67, he walked a wire across the field at Philadelphia Stadium, entertaining Phillies baseball fans. A few years later, he walked 750 feet above Tallulah Falls in Georgia, despite a vicious wind. He even did two headstands in mid-span. At age 70, Carl said, I get so damn lonely on the ground. Life is being on the wire. Everything else is just waiting. Most seminarians have heard the story of Rabbi Hillel, who was asked by a student to teach the whole of the Torah while standing on one foot. Hillel gladly cooperated, stood on one foot and said, that which is hateful to you, do not do unto another. Then Hillel said, this is the whole Torah. The rest is merely commentary. Now go study. Here's also a Buddhist story about balance. There was once an acrobat and a student who had mastered amazing tricks together. 
One called for the student to climb a bamboo pole and then stand on the acrobat's shoulders. The student did it as he was bid and the master acrobat advised him, now lad, you watch out for me and I'll watch out for you. What this master said just made good sense. We do need to work together and watch out for each other. There can be some pretty nasty falls in life, and it's good to know that someone is there to catch us if we lose our balance. Such altruism is a noble thing. But the student didn't like this idea. No, master, that plan will not work. Rather, you look after yourself. Keep your own balance. And I'll look after myself, keeping my balance. And I think that will be our best strategy for avoiding a mishap. By keeping my own balance, I will, in effect, be protecting you. And by keeping your balance, you will, in effect, be protecting me. Because if you fall, I fall. If I fall, you fall. Buddha agreed with the student. If we are mindful in the way we live our own lives, striving to maintain a balanced attitude, staying focused on the present moment, with an attitude of patience and forbearance, loving kindness and compassion, we will be also protecting others because we are maintaining our own spiritual balance. And this will create a situation in which both you and others are protected. From my reading, clearly balance is not learned from books. If it were, I would not be increasingly inclined to totter as I age. Balance is practiced while living in a precarious world. The second anniversary of the pandemic was also this week. It blindsided us, endangered us, isolated us, angered us, brought us together and then tore us apart. And we're left wondering if it will ever end. In all my 73 years, I've never known the world to be more precarious. The only positive outcome I can see in all this will come from trusting our sixth sense to find balance. It may come and go quickly, like the equinox, but we know it will be back. Revel in it when you experience it. Walk the high wire. Be patient while you are waiting. Practice mustering and maintaining the belief that the improbable is possible. If necessary, stack rocks or go to the playground or read Shakespeare to visualize it. And as you like it, he wrote, sweet are the uses of adversity, which like the toad, ugly and venomous, where she had a precious jewel in his head. And this, our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. We've 
heard our closing song before, but this is a different version. It's entitled, We Are. My closing words. When the candle dims, the wax almost spent, the light turns amber like a sunset. Still, it provides light. Still, it provides heat. Still, it can kindle new flame and pass its glow on and contribute to new illumination. When sunsets turn to new days, when seasons transform all, when the candle dims, all is not lost. Hope continues, uncertain and true. Like candlelight, ready to spark again, all is not lost. And now, if you have a candle or chalice, it's time to extinguish it. We extinguish to this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Time to move to our small group meetings. The question is, what have you done to find balance in these precarious times? 